uh, you know, this, this month has been uh, four years in the making and we're, we're getting ready for launch. Uh, can you just talk about what that journey has been like over the last four or five years? It obviously was a lot about uh, the the team, Chris, myself, and the other co-founders of Snorkel, Perma, Braden, Henry, and many others at Stanford and at the organizations we partnered with and that we're now, the customers we're now working quite closely with. Uh, that was a lot of the journey was just getting, you know, having a, a truly fantastic team to work with. Um, you know, I think there were, uh, there was a phase where we were just playing with the the core idea of, hey, could we affect this, this paradigm shift and how people interacted with machine learning? Uh, could we tell the subject matter expert that was labeling thousands and thousands and thousands of documents or medical images over months, hey, there's a better way to get what you know into the ML system and all of the kind of theoretical and algorithmic and systems challenges that went along with that. I think then there was a stage where we started to actually deploy this in you know, some partner organizations, uh, many of whom we were able to co-publish you know, about these deployments. And I think the, the exciting part of the journey is, is repeating a lot of the core elements of that process. So we've been you know, fortunate uh, at the company to now work with another batch of some of the you know, uh, best, most marquee customers in the world that we could have hoped for um, you know, in, in, in finance, government, uh, uh, telecom, beyond. Um, so that's, that's been, I guess, the, the exciting continuation of the journey in my view. The part that's been to me really fascinating about you know the last year has been we had a strong hypothesis about hey these pain points are universal this is really part of this you know global shift but we've seen that our, our customers are coming to us and talking to us about actually that shift as well and so our first and initial set of customers you know as they've come and engaged with us they're not talking about those you know point solutions they're not talking about hey just let's solve this one thing and then you know get out of our way kind of thing we're really building partnerships for that longer journey. And I think one of the things that's been so remarkable about the team is that because they have that kind of empathy, they've they've been able to get and grow with some of these customers. And even though we're already a year old, it's not uncommon for our customers to start talking to us about what's gonna be happening in two and three years. And I think that's one of the things that really sets the trajectory of this company apart, that it's not, hey, we're doing one thing today. We really see this shift and, and, and our customers are bringing us along on this journey. So this, this last year has been just really exhilarating as a result of that. You know, the automation of data labeling is super complicated. And you had this breakthrough at Stanford, the two of you together, this new approach to data labeling. Why do you think so many organizations continue to hand label data? And, and you know, what is the reason that, that the rest of the world hasn't come along to Snorkel yet? So, it's, uh, you know, I think one thing is that, uh, you know, if you want to label uh, stop signs or pedestrians or cats or dogs to train a, you know, uh, AI solution for that, you know, you can, you know, get it labeled re relatively cheaply. If you're a bank or a government agency or a medical institution or a telecom company, you just can't, you know, ship your data out to get labeled cheaply. You have data that's that's private, that requires subject matter experts in your org to label, and that changes all the time. And so I think the really uh, um, truly messy and challenging and central part of this problem that you can't just tackle from the academic perspective with an algorithm is the integration of different types of different user roles of the data scientist, the developer, the subject matter expert who has the expertise to convey to the model and how that all comes together in a platform. And that's something that, you know, we think is enabled by the research we did, but that's only the, the starting step of the story. It's really the platform that brings it all together. And that's what we're building at the company. Yeah, I think that that's exactly right in my, my view. I think, you know, you look at where was able to adopt Snorkel and there were places that had reservoirs of PhDs, really highly paid engineers, and they were able to deploy it for their most important technological problem, right? This is the problem that, you know, is connected to top line revenue. We can throw a ton of people on, at it to understand why this advance is so critical and, and how it's changing our, our apparatus and, and be able to build everything else that's out around it. But what we're seeing now is to be able to deploy that, you need a platform. You need to be able to bring in, as Alex mentioned, all the different roles and consumers, the, the business users, the SMEs, uh, the people who are in ops, to bring that all together. And that platform simply didn't exist. So one of the things that we get, especially as we go around and talk about Snorkel, the open source research project, was, hey, we'd love to use it, but we have to be able to do X, Y, and Z to get it into production. And with our customers, we figured out what the most important X, Y, and Zs are, and now we're bringing that actually out as a product. And so that transition, as you see, you know, Lots of folks try out Snorkel. Lots of folks get understand the vision and are very excited about it. The research community is extremely excited about it. However, to really productionize it, that's why this company is, is necessary as a vehicle. And that was really a click over point for us where we realized you know, the research had kind of, in some ways, you know, put us in this beautiful position, but we had to move to the next step of impact. We, we had to do a company as the, as the way to get it out there. 
Most people probably don't have a sense of the scale of the data teams at these large companies. You know, the, the Ubers, the Twitters, Facebook, Google, these companies have massive teams that are, that are out there looking for, uh, you know, unique ways to label training data to, to build their next model, the, the models that serve up all the content that we all analyze every single day. And uh, when we were diligencing uh, this opportunity, we were blown away at the level of investment that each of these large public companies uh, makes in, in labeling data just on a daily basis. And so I think, um, you know, often we hear in the news about how labeled data is very important to machine learning and to artificial intelligence. And, and it's, it's more obvious when the machine learning is used to hone our feeds, our Twitter feeds, our Facebook feeds, the YouTube videos that we watch, uh, the Uber that, that comes and picks us up. Um, but a lot of your customers aren't just these big, large tech companies. You also have banks, you have government customers, you've got people across all different industries. Can you talk about some of the other use cases that are, you know, that, that, that get really excited about engaging with you? So again, you know, as you've noted, you know, we've, we've applied the technology behind Snorkel over the years to everything from, you know, big tech use cases to genomics, to self-driving cars, to cardiac video analysis and everything, you know, nearly everything in between. So, you know, we have a, a pretty ambitious roadmap. Um, but the most exciting cases, use cases that we're focused on right now are ones that are, you know, truly zero to one rather than just increasing the quality or the speed in a marginal sense. In other words, these are sectors, uh, you know, use cases where, um, you know, you have data that is very private, can't be shipped out to, you know, external orgs to, to label that require special subject matter experts, you know, a legal analyst at a bank, a doctor, uh, a government uh, a subject matter expert to label. And that also have data that's changing all the time. You know, the inputs are changing, the output goals are changing. And so um, you can't just label once. Uh, you can't spend, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on an asset that's going to depreciate in, you know, a day or two. And so all of these challenges don't just make, you know, having armies of hand labelers produce your training data um, costly or inconvenient or slow. They make it completely impractical. And so we've, um, you know, uh, been working with users in, uh, with customers in finance, government, other other sectors where um, you know, they were just dead stopped on this data problem, even despite, you know, huge investments in, in the teams, the tech, the, the infrastructure to, to, you know, to run uh, AI and ML solutions. So speaking of learning and AI, so we've had uh, many, many in-depth conversations about the future of machine learning, the future of artificial intelligence. Um, where do you see that market going over the coming years? I think, you know, at the 40,000 foot level. Uh, we're, we're seeing and going to see a lot more interest in the, the systems and infrastructure around the machine learning models. Uh, to, uh, to, to borrow one of my colleagues, uh, Amit, Ta colleagues Amit Talwalker's uh, metaphor of, you know, uh, the miracle of flight and then, uh, and then the air traffic control and, and, and transport infrastructure. Maybe not the best metaphor right now, but, you know, the still appropriate in that we've had this miracle of flight moment with ML in, in, many, in many regards. Um, now, I think there's going to be a lot of interest uh, in the systems and infrastructure. And in particular, uh, the part that, that we work on at Snorkel is, is the data. And, and obviously, you know, I think that the data is, you know, it's not so controversial to say anymore that it's not something that you can just sort of ignore and assume is there. It is the uh, central element of building a, a working, a successful AI solution. And so the ability to actually manage this data, to iterate, inspect, and and get you know non-developers looped in. I think that's going to be a major continued focus, both at Snorkel and and in, in you know a myriad of other um, you know ideas and approaches in, in this vein.